In this video, I'm going to talk about formatting a pie chart. So let's get straight into it. I have here a pie chart <clears throat> that I designed from before, but we're going to do a fresh one just for good practice so you get used to creating pie charts. I'm going to use the clear sheet button up here to go all the way up here. So if you just press this like little bar chart with the X, gets rid of everything and it's nice and clean. I use this a lot actually. So when I'm doing like data exploration, build visualization, uh, not quite what I want, reset. Uh, not quite what I want, reset. And you can, <laughs> you can build stuff so freakishly quick. Let's build a pie chart. So I'm gonna start with a measure and a dimension. So reminding that in the show me tells you exactly what you need. My nose is itchy exactly what you need for a pie chart. So here it's a dimension and a measure. So let's pick sales and I'm going to do ship status. So again, holding that control button so you can select multiple ones. Then we're going to select a pie. And then let's minimize this. The first thing we always do with a pie chart is always expand it, entire view. It just makes it easier when you're designing and labeling things. You can see things very clearly. Let's start with the colors. If I click here, you will notice that there's no single color palette. Uh, the main reason is because by nature of a pie chart, you will always have slices. Otherwise, it kind of defeats the purpose of a pie chart. Like if I get rid of this color, it's just a circle, one color. So you're just saying, oh, it just accounts for 100%, which doesn't make any sense. So we're always going to have this edit colors where you choose what the split up is. We can choose again, whichever palette we want. I'm not going to go through this because we've been through it so many times with the other visualizations. Assign palette, apply, and OK. You can see we've got our colors right there. Going into a few of the other options, we have opacity. This adjusts, again, how see-through it is. However, I very rarely, actually, I can't even recall when I've ever seen anyone do a clear or a reduced opacity pie chart. Maybe you would do it because in Tableau, you can overlay pie charts with maps, for example, or you can overlay, overlay it with other things. But even then, I wouldn't see any reason to reduce the opacity. It may actually kind of have an adverse effect in terms of reading your visualization. Like, I mean, that doesn't even look good. Even if you add a border, it doesn't look right. Also, you don't need it. I mean, keep it simple. There's a reason um, that pie charts come standard as solid color. There's a reason for that. And that's a there's a reason Tableau chose that because it's the easiest way to view it. But if you wanted to, because I don't know, you wanted to use it, it's there. The next one is the borders. Again, I've never seen this and I would actually advise to never use borders on pie charts. That's just my, that's just my viewpoint. If you want to, I'm not going to stop you. But the whole point of pie charts is that it's separated by colors. The choice of colors is um, deliberate. These colors are not chosen because they're just pretty. It's because the way they contrast allows the human eye to distinguish between them very easily. If you choose something that's all one color, for example, all blue like this, and we go assign palette, gets a little bit harder. And this is bad practice. You never want to do this. This is where confusion takes place. And you might think it's like, well, it's not that hard. But some people have color uh, uh, eyesight problems and that they can't distinguish uh, colors very well. There's a reason these are chosen. Tableau has even gone to the lengths to consider people who are colorblind. So if you go here to the, I think it's the fourth one or third one, colorblind and apply this, this helps with people who are colorblind because a lot of people actually have eye problems. So you want to make it as easy as possible for everyone. If you are in, in, in an industry where the average age is quite high, I've had a lot of issues where I've been requested, oh, can you make the colors a little bit better or easier for us to see? I'm not talking about like, you know, 90-year-olds. I'm talking like 30-year-olds or 40-year-olds saying, you know, it's a bit hard to see. So always consider your audience uh, when choosing this kind of stuff. Um, when you have good colors chosen, you really don't need a border. In fact, it just, it, it just distracts you from like the labels or whatever it is that they're reading. The next thing is the size. The size... When you're initially developing a pie chart, totally unnecessary. Like it does, it makes it larger or smaller, but this does not play a role until we get into dashboard view. Because when you get into dashboard view, that's when the size of the pie chart needs to be adjusted because you've now mixed it in with other visualizations 
based on the size of your um, canvas, let's call it. So we'll get into more detail about that, but at this stage, you really don't need to worry about it. The next one is the label. So let's add a label in here. Let's go through the same thing that we did last time, which is we're going to add ship status into the label because that's what we're using to split it by color. You can see on schedule, late delivery and early delivery. We're going to add the sum of sales again into the label. So this is just good practice for you guys. Let's drop that into label. <coughs> then we're going to right click on this label. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to go quick table calculation and we're going to go percent of total because this is just a really standard thing with pie charts. Every beginner, almost every beginner that I've worked with that does pies is like, well, how do I add percentage? It's just a normal thing that they ask. So we'll go percent of total. We got that in there. And we also want to add the value itself. So we go sales. Let's drop that into label. And now we have that value going into customization mode. There's a few things we can do. We can go into full customization where we can adjust it from here. And I'm going to do it real quickly. Again, we've done this numerous times, but repetition, repetition. That's how we learn. Let's put a bracket here. You can, you can decorate it as however you like. Why do they call it format and not decorate? It would be so much cooler to call things. Um, what's the decoration on your text? <laughs> I'm sure in media companies, they have very special terms. So we have the, the text labels like so. Going back in here, I tend to use this one more than I use this font one, mainly because when you use this one, <clears throat> it applies the same thing to everything in your text. And I don't want that. I always want to be able to distinguish easily that the person doesn't have to try and go, which one's the percentage, which one's the number. It's, it's a microsecond thing of they're trying to decide, but that's mental energy, brain energy that they have to use on reading my data than actually decision making. You want to make it as easy as possible for everybody. So if I go here and go 14, it just makes everything 14. It makes it hard to distinguish between them. So just undo. So I, if you want to undo just that back button as a reminder. So I very rarely use this unless I have a single label. Alignment, <clears throat> don't worry about that. <clears throat> oh, my throat. With the marks, this I never use for pie charts, mainly because with a pie chart, you don't want too many elements. That is just proper practice for a pie chart. Let me just show you a quick example. If I do sales and something with a lot of cuts, right? So state and we go pie. That is bad practice. Don't ever do that. Whenever I see this, it's just bad because it doesn't give you any information. It's just confusing. It's just useless. If you ever had something like this, you're better off doing it in a hierarchy where you can add a little bit more kind of grouping, or you can even do a packed bubble or even simpler than that. You can just go with a bar chart and just add some colors in here. Maybe you want to split it a little bit differently, but you have way better choices than a pie chart. Oh, hang on. Go back to the original one. Much better choices than doing this. So please, you got to learn to choose the right visualization for the right data set. This would not be appropriate. Let's get rid of that because it's making me sick just looking at it. All right, going back to this one. That is your labeling. So here with the marks to label, we can do min max. It looks like it's broken when one doesn't show up. And this has happened to me before where someone goes, hey, Jed, you know, can you check that visualization? Something's not working, you know, because pie charts should have labels. Going into selected, again, I don't like this because it means you have to refer from this color to this color on the right side, you know, from this one to this. And that takes time. I don't like that. And when you click on it, then you see the value. It's just an extra step for my audience members. I don't want them to have to, I don't want them to have to put that much effort in. Um, oops, wrong one. And then highlighted is again, very similar to selected, except when you click on the legend, totally useless in my opinion, because I mean, why add that extra step for your users? If you only have three slices, don't need it. So I just leave this on all just makes more sense. The very last thing is the tooltip. Tooltip in this case, again, is exactly the same as the rest. So when we click on that tooltip, come up with this option and we can adjust this. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna do it again just cause it's exactly the same, uh, but feel free to have a play. 
that is how you visualize, uh, visualize. That is how you format your pie chart. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you at the next video. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to learn the entire Tableau platform, consider enrolling into my course. It's one of the highest ranking courses on Udemy and enrolling today, you'll be joining the almost 200,000 students that have enjoyed my courses over the years. Thanks again for watching and hope to see you in the course.